Why do 95% of people who start using topical minoxidil quit using it within 12 months? Well, in today's video, I'm going to take you through the five key reasons people quit using topical minoxidil within that 12 month time frame, and I'll give you some little hacks as to how you can counter some of these pain points so you can have the best chance of success if you're using topical minoxidil in your hair loss routine. If we haven't already met, I'm Dr. Jonathan Hopkirk, Sydney-based hair loss doctor and co-founder of Levels of You, an Australian-based hair restoration company that treats people across Australia on a daily basis. And I'm also someone who is on the hair loss journey fighting hair loss myself, having gone through androgenic alopecia and gone through my peaks and troughs of treating hair loss on a daily basis on my own head. So I am particularly passionate about giving people the opportunity to have great success on the hair loss journey. So in today's video, you will get some great insights into the five key reasons why people quit using minoxidil topically before they've even had the best chance of success. And I will also give you some tips and tricks as to how you can improve your chances with topical minoxidil if you're using it in your hair loss routine. So stick around to the end, learn these five key things, and if you're also there to the end, you'll get the chance to get your hands on our medical board's free hair loss ebook, which has got over 70 years of experience jam-packed into it with the evidence, the pros and cons behind everything from rosemary oil all the way up to hair transplants. So if you wanna get your hands on this, just watch to the end and follow the prompts. All right, let's crack into it. So before we jump into it, let's give a brief understanding of what minoxidil is. So minoxidil was originally a blood pressure medication that in the 80s got approval to be able to be used topically to treat male and female pattern hair loss. Now the reason this came about is because 60-80% to 80 of people who were taking the drug orally for blood pressure indications actually grew more hair. So then when they found that they used it topically they could isolate that response and have the wanted effect which is hair growth in areas that they wanted to have this desirable outcome obviously on the scalp and not in other parts of the body. How does it work? Well over the last 30-40 years they are not quite sure exactly how it works although we do know it works on potassium channels of cells it is a vasodilator so it opens up blood vessels and what we do know is that it's a stimulator so it will stimulate the hair to become thicker and it will prolong the antigen phase of the hair growth cycle so it will reduce the number of hairs that are shedding and it will increase the length of time in which hairs are growing so that's obviously an incredibly positive thing so that in a nutshell is how minoxidil works and how we came about with respect to its use and its utility within the hair loss space. Now let's jump into the five key reasons people quit using minoxidil before they've even had a chance to have success. Number one, results don't match expectations. So this is a really important thing for people to understand that minoxidil is a stimulator. It is not a blocker, so it's not a DHT blocker. So yes, whilst it has some utility in hair loss treatment programs, we need to really be realistic about what it can achieve. It can thicken up the hair fiber. It can prolong the length of time in which that hair is growing. It can stop shedding in some people. However, it is not going to address the underlying cause in male or female pattern hair loss, which is often a genetic predisposition to having sensitivities to hormones which are floating around in our blood. So if you don't mitigate the hormones with other agents, you're likely only going to get so far. What we know about minoxidil over the years is from a topical perspective, about 40% of people actually stabilize the loss, so they will slow the hair loss progression, and about 40% of people might see some cosmetic improvements. So collectively, about 80% of people will see some benefits. Although, for a lot of people, just stabilizing the loss is not enough of an outcome for them to be happy with, and so this leads to people canning it within that 12 month period. They don't see what they were hoping to see. They hope that they were going to see some massive transformation. And if you're not in that 40% group that sees cosmetic improvement, then often people quit it because it just didn't meet their expectations for this particular drug. So number one is expectations are matched with results. So things that you can do to counter it is just 
be realistic about what this drug can achieve and know that stabilizing the loss is not nothing. So if you stabilize the loss, that's great. You might need to then use other agents to give you some improvements. If you get a stabilization as well as an improvement, that's fantastic. But it also might be that you also need to look into other things to include to get even better results or to bring synergy with minoxidil in a hair loss program. So there we go, that's number one. Number two, side effects. People often quit using topical minoxidil within the first 12 months because they experience side effects. Now those side effects might be headaches, it might be contact dermatitis, so itchiness of the scalp and irritation of the scalp. It might be hair growth in unwanted areas like the sideburns and on the face, which is especially problematic for female patients might be that they get flushing i've also had patients have strange dreams so there is a raft of different side effects that can put people off using this particular drug and then they cease it well within that 12 months period because that often happens within the first few months of using topical minoxidil so what can you do to reduce the potential side effects well if we just take it back to the contact dermatitis so Often, the contact dermatitis, so the itchiness and the irritation of the scalp, is actually not caused by minoxidil itself, but it's caused by the formulations or the base that minoxidil is formulated with. So that can often be propylene glycol, it can often be alcohol bases and preparations, and those things irritate the heck out of your scalp. So if you can elect to find minoxidil formulations that you can use topically that do not have those irritating ingredients in it then you're going to have a better chance of not irritating your scalp which will then lead to better compliance other things i've seen are patients that have had facial flushing or headaches when they've started on a five percent concentration of topical minoxidil when we've actually reduced it down to three percent they tend to have less of those side effects and then that obviously can improve compliance so it might be that you need to reduce the concentration of topical minoxidil that you're using so you can still get some benefit without the side effects. Then with respect to getting hair growth in areas that you don't want it to, well, it may well be that if you just convert from using a minoxidil serum to a minoxidil foam, you'll be able to better isolate the minoxidil application to the areas that you're concerned with without it running down the side of your face. So serums sometimes can, if they're quite serious in nature, can flow down the side of the face and can get into areas like the face uh, or the back of the neck or the sideburns where you don't want it to take effect. So if you convert to a foam, it's going to stay more localized and it actually absorbs into the tissue a bit quicker. The caveat being is that, however, you don't want to just apply it to the hair because the hair is not going to have the effect. You want the foam to be applied to the scalp as best you can because we want it to absorb into the scalp, not into the actual hair, which is just dead rope hanging there off the scalp. Number three, the dread shed. This has to be one of the biggest reasons for people quitting minoxidil before they've had the best chance of success because they get the dread shed. So what is the dread shed? The dread shed is where minoxidil prompts those hairs that are in the telogen phase of the hair growth cycle. So that's some five to 10% of the hairs on your head are actively going to shed over the next 100 days. What happens is when you start minoxidil, you actually have this negatively reinforcing happening which is the hair actually gets pushed off the head prematurely this freaks the heck out of people but the reason it happens is that those hairs have to go before new hair can grow so it's actually a positive thing and it actually shows you that your body is responding to the minoxidil it typically only lasts for about eight weeks it can happen in up to 50 percent of people that use topical minoxidil and it is one of the biggest reasons why people stop using minoxidil but if you just understand that the gains are on the other side of those pains you just need to push through and on the other side of that is where you're going to get the stimulation effect you're going to get some growth some regrowth in those areas where those those follicles or where those hairs that were dwindling that were not as thick they're going to go and then they're going to be replaced with thicker healthier hair so just remember that when you experience the dread shed and know that this is something that a lot of people experience but it does dissipate and it does go away so push through number four people stop too soon if you stop using minoxidil within 12 months you have not given yourself the best chance of seeing if this drug is actually going to work for you one of the biggest things people do with topical minoxidil 
is they can it before they've had the chance to actually see success. Now, what we know about hair growth is that that follicle that is getting encouraged by ingredients like minoxidil, it takes at least three months to start showing some effect. Now, when does that translate into a cosmetic effect? Well, we know that hair grows at about a centimeter a month. So if you've got short hair, well, then you're going to see some cosmetic benefits sooner. But if you've got slightly longer hair, it's going to take a while for you to get some camouflage and some cosmetic benefit. So we know that topical minoxidil really starts having cosmetic benefit between 6 to 12 months. But you should not can it within 12 months because it might be that you're going to be a late bloomer. It might be that it's going to take a little bit longer for you to get that response. But the worst thing you can do is get to 9 months, 10 months, 11 months even and go, no, it's not working for me. Give it a full 12 months before you decide whether or not it's given you the effect that you want. And also take into consideration that if you're using before and afters that are standardized and systematic, you might see that actually your hair loss stabilized in that time and you're going to be in that 40% category that just has stabilization and doesn't have cosmetic improvements, so to speak. So it might well be that then you need to include other things within your hair restoration program to give you a better improvement cosmetically. So don't write it off if it hasn't worked for you within 12 months and especially don't write it off if all it's done is in your mind stabilize a hair because that's not nothing and the fifth and final reason why people can minoxidil topically within 12 months is compliance fatigue so compliance fatigue is a big one and the reason people get compliance fatigue is because in the original studies that were published in the 80s about topical minoxidil it was put forward that you needed to use one mil of topical minoxidil twice a day once in the morning once in the evening the difficulty about this is from a compliance perspective that's a lot it also equates to using more of that solution so then that's more costly over a you know a lifetime but it also means that you have to do something twice a day now for people that are hair conscious which is most of us that are watching these sorts of videos we don't necessarily want to grease your scalp as well so if we happen to use it in the morning and as well as night and as well as the night time it becomes a little bit prohibitive on our hair styling practices and all these sorts of things so compliance fatigue is a big one now what you can be reassured to know is that minoxidil is active in your system for an entire day so just less than 24 hours so 21 hours minoxidil is active in your system and the doctors that were originally involved in those studies in the 80s have further quantified that you can actually use minoxidil once a day and get the same benefit so what you can do is just apply it to the area that you have concern with you don't have to use one mil or two mils or four mils or three mils use the amount that you need to cover the surface area that you are concerned with and use that once a day it might be less than one mil it might be slightly more than one mil but you don't need to use necessarily what is on the bottle that is what was just in the original studies and within medicine we try to fit people within a a one-size-fits-all bucket but we're not all in the one-size-fits-all bucket so i would always advise you to get professional advice around how to manage your hair restoration personally but i think it's very important for you to understand that you can use minoxidil once a day you don't have to use it twice a day so then that will improve your compliance because you won't have to do as much so then i've just saved you half of the amount of time and half of the amount of money this year alone just from that particular point. So there we are, the five key reasons that people quit using minoxidil within the 12 month period. If you were to just take on those five key reasons and apply some of those methods I've given you, you will have a better chance of success. Now, if you would like to get your hands on our medical board's ebook, simply like, subscribe, and email me at jonathan at levelsofyou.com and I will get that sent over to you ASAP. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Tune in next week because I'm going to talk about another new hair loss drug which has actually gone through the phase three clinical trials and may be getting closer to the market than the PP405 molecule that we spoke about recently. Hope you have a good week. Hope you've enjoyed today. Cheers.